Are you an early bird or a night owl? I'm an early bird. I go to bed like nine o'clock oh, like so every jealous. night. My head hits the pillow. I'm like out. Yeah. But when the boys are older, I don't think you're going to be able to do that. No. So it's like homework to help with, uh-huh. you know, practices that end at nine. The second they're done and they're in bed, I'm like, all right, good night. That's why you always look so well rested. Thank and I, am I do. Mess. I get like eight hours of oh, I'm so jealous. eight hours of sleep. I can't function. Hey there, hot messes. Welcome to success of a hot mess where we celebrate the art of juggling life's chaos and coming out on top. I'm Stacey Isaacs, your host and resident rock star lawyer, dance mom, and survivor. We're going to dive into candid conversations about conquering challenges, embracing our unique selves, and finding success in the beautiful mess of it all. Welcome to the show, Sam. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Of course. Um, Before we really get into it, I want to ask you, a couple questions. Okay. Is that okay? What is the first concert you ever went to? My first concert was the Beach Boys. No way. Yeah, I went with my dad. I don't remember who else was there, but like I was definitely like probably like five years old. Like I was really young. The Beach Boys. Beach huh? Boys. Did you enjoy it? I loved it. That's funny. That's yeah. probably like a very ingrained memory for uh-huh. you. Yep. Very nice. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite song? I have a lot. I'm going to guess you're going to tell me Taylor Swift. I would say Taylor Swift normally, but like if I'm at a bar and like there's a jukebox, I'm going to choose Weezer, Say It Ain't So. I love Weezer. Good choice. Good song. So if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? I would want to live in Florence, Italy or on the Amalfi Coast. One of the two. Ah, Florence, I think. Because you could just like walk everywhere. You get wine and the day like it's normal to drink at every meal it's just cool there don't they take naps in the middle of the day that might be spain Spain. okay that actually sounds like a better place maybe (laughs) spain maybe i would choose spain i've never been to spain but italy if they took naps in the middle of the day are you an early bird or a night owl i'm an early bird i go to bed like nine o'clock like every night my head hits the pillow. I'm like out. Yeah. But when the boys are older, I don't think you're going to be able to do that. No. So it's like homework to help with, uh-huh. you know, practices that end at nine. The second they're done and they're in bed, I'm like, all right, good night. That's why you always look so well rested. <sighs> and I, am I do. Mess. I get like eight hours of oh, I'm so jealous. eight hours of sleep. I can't function. What is your biggest fear? Like snakes and reptiles and any insect or anything. You will see me jump like the furthest. That snake or reptile fear is like not uncommon. I remember when Reese was like for her seventh birthday, she wanted a reptile party. We had like someone come with all these different reptiles and a couple like of her friends who were supposed to come. I would have flipped out. Yeah, Yeah, they couldn't go. I wouldn't have gone. I didn't go to a party when I was a kid because there was a dog. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah that's well, that's uh, uh, the kind of person i am okay well i'm glad my dogs went to the office today oh awesome yeah so sam you are an entrepreneur you have your own business um can you tell us how you're able to manage being an entrepreneur a mom all the things you do i know you're you love concerts and music you know so how do you just fit it all in to a day? I feel like I don't. I feel like I don't have it all together. Like I'm constantly like, oh, I wish there was another hour in the day. But I just set boundaries. I feel like is like the most important thing is setting boundaries. And I make sure that I only work certain days and I say no, no matter what on the weekends and prioritize, I guess, my time with my husband and my kids and I realized that actually over the past year because I was doing so much education and like I had a coach and it was just like nonstop. I had like six classes a week. I had zero work-life balance. It was awful and I was miserable. (laughs) And uh, that's when I realized I was like, you know what? Like, I think I want all this, but like, I don't. Like I want to be with my family and to be with the kids. And so I actually stopped. I'm not doing any education right now, which is crazy for me, but I needed a break. And it's, it, I don't do it all, but I try. It looks like that on Instagram and Facebook. Well, for someone, regardless of what business it is, say there's a mom who just wants to start her own business mm-hmm. um, and it can feel daunting when there are kids, 
you know, and a husband and obligations, um, would you say that's the most important thing, saying no to certain things? Absolutely. 100%. You have to say no. I think that is like really great advice. I mean, just yesterday, on top of knowing that I was doing the podcast today, I have to drive Jules to dance today, just had a million things today. I said yes last night to go see Derek Huff. I don't know if you oh, yeah. Dancing with the Stars. Uh-huh. Um, and I tried to back out like five times to my friends and they're like, why? I said, because I have to be up early, hair and makeup, I, you know. You don't have to explain. I know, and I was resentful that I was going. I went there, I wound up having a good time, but I have to take your advice and learn, you know, how to say no. So if, you know, our businesses are obviously a little different, like I doubt your clientele is calling you complaining at night or stuff like that, but is there a time that you, like, say I'm not taking any calls after this time? Um, I really try, and that's something I've struggled with, and Chad gets so mad at me, like, because I'll take a text from someone, and I'm like, it's their hair. Like, that is, to me, it's the biggest deal. Like, I'm sorry. Like, if your hair's messed up, like, you're screwed. Like, so for me, I, if the text isn't ridiculous, I'm going to respond, because I want that person to be able to relax and not be freaking out and if it's not going to hurt me if it's really not inappropriate and it's whatever like I that's something I struggle with is and I don't have like a business phone I just have my phone and I like being there for my clients and I have a relationship with them so I feel like it's just that that's something I I definitely take text messages and stuff like after hours I try not to but it just happens What about if you're on vacation? If I'm on vacation, I try not to, but I probably will respond just because, I don't know, I just feel bad. So you are actually in the business of giving busy moms their self-care. Like going for a fresh blowout or color can really change someone's entire mood. So what do you do for yourself for self-care? For self-care, I do... um, I have a standing appointment for Botox every three months, no matter what. I will never miss it. And my facials I get, I think, like every two months or whatever it is. And then, yeah, that's – and then my nails I do. Those are my self-care is my image, I guess. And your infusions, right? And my IVs, yeah, that's when I have time for it. But um, I do a lot of self-care. I have to. I need it. And the reason I was able to come today is because Thursdays are like my self-care day and I don't work every Thursday. Like a lot of times, like I do like my own thing on Thursdays, like I'll get get a massage or get a facial, go shopping, go to lunch. It's necessary, right? We can't just work all the time and we can't just be moms. There has to be a Mm -hmm. balance. So is there anyone you rely upon, whether it be like a nanny or your husband or your mom, like to help out so that you can work. My husband is, as you know, awesome. And I rely on him a lot. Like he's home before me, like not most days, like half and half. I feel like we're very 50-50 with who's home first during the week. But I have a nanny. She's there Monday through Friday from like 1.30 to maybe 6 30 7 o'clock and she is the greatest thing in the world and she is responsible for getting their homework done which is awesome and feeding them and bathing them and it's like then I just get to get like a nice hour with my kids of not fighting with them to eat or bathe or whatever and it it works for us that is really nice because I can tell you from experience that as they get older and the homework gets harder Um, It's a battle and it's not something after I work all day that I am very pleasant when they need help, like with math or whatever. So having somebody to assist, luckily in this house, David's really good at math so he can help. But, you know, mine are too old for nannies. So I'm not looking forward to that. (laughs) (laughs) But Chad's really good at everything. So he'll probably be the homework person, which will. I'm sorry, Chad. Chad's good at everything. It's everything. Big props to Chad. Yeah, everything. It's so annoying. 
So, Sam, do you have any sort of routine in the morning till night, um, or is it kind of a day-by-day thing, fly by the seat of your pants, depending on the day? We have a routine every day, like since the kids were babies, and I'm the worst person in the morning, so it starts with Chad trying to get me awake (laughs) and kind of yelling at me and getting me up, and then I finally get up, and then one of us is either brushing our teeth or making the coffee. Mm -hmm. And then he usually gets the kids um, fed and dressed in the morning. And I'm still trying to like function and get up. And yeah, so he's responsible for taking Gavin to school, who's my older one. And then I'm responsible for taking the little one to school. So I have a little extra time because he doesn't have to be there at like exactly a certain time because he's in preschool. Um, So I take him every day. He has a million questions on the way to school. Gives me anxiety. (laughs) Drop him off. And then I usually, the second I get out of the school zone, I smoke a joint. And then... (laughs) Really? Yeah. The second I'm out of the school zone, I roll down my windows, I light up a joint. And then I... Go either... And that's your medical marijuana. Yeah, my medical marijuana. And it just, like, I don't even get high. It just makes me, like, I could breathe. I don't know. It's, like, just routine every day. And, yeah. Um, So then I'll either go to work and start early or I'll go home and, like, get ready and have breakfast and then go to work a little later. But I usually, I feel like going at, like, 8.30 or 9 to the salon. And then I work all day on my feet. And then most of the time, like, meet Chad for a drink on the way home. And then we'll go home and see the kids at, like, 6, 6.30 and hang out and have a glass of wine together and watch something with the kids and then put the boys to sleep. And then Chad and I will hang out for a little bit. And then I'm like, all right, good night. I like that you fit in the drink with Chad, like, before going home. It's obviously important to not just be all about your clients, mm-hmm. not just be all about the kids, but tend to your marriage we as well. We try. I, I like yeah, that. We really try. Like but if I get off early enough, like where are you? I'll come meet you. I really, yeah. He's always out, you know, with work. So I like that. And I know that you do not do hair on the weekends. Nope. So you are closed. And for a mm-hmm. lot of hairstylists, um, Saturdays are like a big money maker. So did you make that determination like i'm not doing this so i have been working since i'm 14 and i worked saturdays since i'm 14. so i've always just been like god i hate working saturdays i never want to work saturdays and then when i gave up doing hair for the few months that i did when i had gavin i really thought that i wasn't going to work anymore so I just stopped working altogether. And then I started taking people just like during the week. And I realized, oh, my God, I can build my book without working on the weekend. And then I just never, ever, ever worked a Saturday again. That was it. I just was like, no more. And I, I did like a couple weddings here and there. And then I was like, you know what? No, I'm done. Like, I don't want to work Saturday. So it's been a good almost eight years since I've worked a Saturday. That's awesome. Yeah. Can you explain the mystery why so many hair salons are closed on Mondays? Like, do people not need their hair done on a Monday? The hairstylists want two consecutive days off. Oh. And hairstylists just, a lot of them are partiers and they need like a day. To recover. Yeah. Okay, so their Sunday night is like. Sunday night is like their Saturday night and Monday is like their Sunday. It's just how it's always been. I don't really know exactly why, but Saturday is the busiest day. You're not going to take off a different day in the week. So two consecutive days. So I know you were talking about having to prioritize certain things. I know for a while you were like going to hair seminars and conferences Mm -hmm. all over um, the United States. Um, Is that something that's currently on the back burner so you could fit other things in? Yeah. That I put on the back burner because I felt like my marriage was being sacrificed, I guess. I don't know if that's the correct verbiage, but I felt like I wasn't putting enough into my relationship with Chad and I kind of just put him on the back burner and I realized, okay, you know what, like what's important to me right now? And so I put my education just kind of on the back burner right now, just until I can figure out how to fit everything in because I can't. So the moral of the story is, you know, I guess you really can't fit 
everything mm-hmm. in, but you can fit a lot. self-care. Yeah. Taking care of your kids, taking care of your marriage and your business. I mean, you do a lot of hair. So Mm -hmm. I imagine that it is paying your bills and and then some. Yeah. Just take me through your journey, how you even became involved with hair. It's so funny because I went to school for business and I got a degree at UCF for like business marketing, thought that I was going to move to New York City and like work for like a marketing agency or an advertising agency. Um, I ended up in a relationship and getting engaged really young and moving to, I guess, essentially Boca. And I was miserable and I couldn't find a job that I liked. I was like working at like Bloomingdale's and then I was working for a clothing company and I was just miserable. I was just self-medicating and just, it was just terrible. And I broke off the engagement and moved in with my parents and decided I have to go back to school of some sort because I'm not getting a job that I want. I'm miserable. And my mom suggested, why don't you do hair? And I was like, I don't know. But out of the blue or were yeah, you good at it? I've always been good at hair and I've always like colored hair just for fun. And even in college, I like cut guys hair, cut girls hair. Did you ever give yourself a mullet at any time? I did, but not on purpose. (laughs) Yeah. Like if you saw pictures of my hair when I first started doing hair, it was awful. It was so bad. It was like that emo haircut. But yeah, so my mom suggested it and I was like, I don't know if I want to touch people like you're, you know, really up close. So before I committed, I went to a makeup course and I realized I was totally comfortable touching people. So then I did beauty school and it just clicked and it was like, I finished beauty school in like six months. I went every day. I went every Saturday. I went at night and just finished like so quickly. Did you have an aha moment where you're like, I'm making a lot of money for a salon. I should be doing this on my own. I did before I left when I had Gavin. Um, And it was like in the thoughts, like maybe I'll get a suite. Maybe I'll do this. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom. I'm going to just quit doing hair. So it was in my head for sure. And it's actually interesting about you. And I think this could be inspiring for somebody who wants to start a business, but really doesn't know where they would do it or if they could afford rent somewhere that you actually created a hair salon in the garage. I did. Yeah. And it was cool because it was separated from like the chaos of the kids in the house. Mm hmm. You had your own little quiet space with like air conditioning, music always music. going. So for someone who cannot afford to go get a suite or something, perhaps that could be like a viable option. hundred percent. And it wasn't really that difficult. Like we got a plumber to put in the sink and we hired somebody to put in the lighting. It, and my husband and his friend built like the station and the cabinetry and my husband put in the AC. Of course, Chad. Did. I know. He's good. Like, he's yeah. just, he's a great, he's great. Um, but yeah, it wasn't that much money. And it was great. It was a great way to see if I wanted to start doing hair again. And, and I no realized overhead. I did. Yeah, no overhead. Right. So if there's a will, there really is a way, regardless of the business. I know mine started at the dining room table, mm-hmm. just brainstorming. So... Did you ever have an epiphany that sort of shaped where you are career-wise now? Definitely. When I had given up doing hair, I thought that's what I wanted to do was be a stay-at-home mom. And I completely just lost who I was. I was like either Chad's wife or Gavin's mom. And I had no purpose anymore. And I just like went into like a really dark depression. And yeah, it came to me and through therapy and all that that I, I needed to work and I needed to do hair because it's just my passion. And I'm so glad that I listened and I now eight years later am busier than I ever have been, more successful than I ever have been. And it was just listening to my inner self, telling myself like, no, you need to do hair. This is what you're, yes, you're a mom, but that's not why you're on earth. Like you're on earth because you live for doing hair and this is what you need to do. Why do you love doing hair? I feel like it's such a big part of who you are and it's such a big part of your appearance that I love making people feel confident 
just by doing their hair. They can walk in a room and feel sexy or feel pretty or feel strong, like just, just by their hair. It's just that, that feeling that you get when you see somebody look in the mirror, that's, that's what it is. Like, I love the artistry of it, but it's really just the way you can make somebody look at themselves. Like when somebody sits in my chair and they start telling me what they're going to do with their hair and they're just like, oh, I look disgusting. I look this. And then when I'm done blow drying and curling, they're in the mirror making like a duck face. Like, <laughs> oh my God. Selfie like time. you can just tell that their confidence just yeah. went up so much. So that's, that's my passion. That's where, that's what keeps me going. I love that. So for the listeners, how do people reach you if they want to get their hair done in the Boca, Parkland, Boynton area? The best way is to go on my Instagram and to click in my link tree and then either book a consultation or just book an appointment because each appointment we have a consultation, a thorough, thorough consultation before we start. What is the Instagram handle? Sam did my hair. At Sam did my hair. At Sam did my hair. One word. And I know that you are always helping me out when I don't see something on the schedule. You understand that my life is crazy and you do try mm-hmm. to squeeze me in. So I appreciate that. Of course, always. Although today I had to do my own hair. So it I wanted to great. know how, what you thought of it. You did <laughs> Thank great. You. It Thank looks you. beautiful. I thought you had it done. <laughs> no, I did it myself. That looks good. Thanks for coming, Sam. Thank you for having me. Okay, have a good day. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Success of a Hot Mess. If you loved what you heard today, be sure to subscribe so you never miss a beat. And hey, sharing is caring. Share this podcast with your friends, family, and anyone who could use a dose of inspiration. Until next time, keep rocking those hot mess moments with style and grace. Cheers. Cheers.